Viva l'Italia! You could say there is no such thing as Italian cuisine. Each of the 20 regions has totally different ways of cooking, created by the geography, culture and invaders. We have come to my region, Piemonte, where there's some of the richest food in Italy. It's one of the most diverse regions. It has miles of flatlands surrounded by the beautiful Alps mountain range. This is my hometown, Borgo Franco. We have in the church where I, I was singing in a little choir, and uh, we were eating the uh, unblessed breads in the sacristy. Very naughty. Uh, and today, it's a sort of um, wedding with the bridesmaid. Yes. Antonio, do you used to be dressed yes. like the little girls there? Yes, obvious. Yeah, all right. And he's coming, the bride. I spent a lot of my youth in this Valmetti, summer houses below the mountains. It's the ideal condition to keep wine yeah. and to keep cheese and all of that. But they keep it for festivity. They bring a little bit of bread <laughs> and that's fantastic. So this is just the right place for me and yes. you. <laughs> These are all my friends and family. <laughs> that was my love for a long time. <laughs> this happens every time I come home. Come inside. Ah, this is a welcome tradition. As he found you. That's how you drink it in the Balmetti. You receive a big glass. You say cheers, you drink a little bit, and then you take it around. Gennaro, sorry, me first. Yeah, no, it's okay. Drink a little bit, Antonio. Salute a tutti, eh, salute. Here, Gennaro. No, no, pass it on, pass it on. There's a real friendship. Now time to show a real friend my pride and joy, the food I grew up with. Oh my goodness me. This is the real Piemontese stuff. This is the Vitello Tonnato. Yeah. You know about that? Yeah. There are small cheeses of sheep with chili, garlic, and oil. That is nice. And then we have here this one. And this, this is an ox tongue. Someone show me. Yeah! I got it. Then this is potato salami. I have to say, I never had no potato salami. This is half potato, half pork. It is fantastic. Marvelous, tasty good. But you know what? There is no vegetable on this table. No, there, there, there are some. First of all, is a potato in the side. Yeah, well, okay. potato is everywhere. Go. Secondly, is the pepper here. Yeah, I thought Look I'm at gonna... this. You can't say anything in front of a cheese like this. No, you're right. Uh, and now you taste a little bit of this cheese. You will forget all your silly vegetables. This you is can. why up to the north that everyone is Ah, because in the south there are no, no fat people. I never said fat. I Come never said the word. You go to Rome, there are, that they have a circumference. Oh, like Rome that. is halfway in Italy. Eat that and then tell me what you think mm. about it. Mm. I start to love north. I really do. A cheese made in heaven. Salute! Salute a tutti! It's wonderful to see so many people around a table and there's the real joy of sharing Italian food because you share it with friends, relation, just fantastic. I include Gennaro because he's from the south, but he has also to have good things from time to time. Gennaro, cheers for you too. Cheers for you. Almost nothing has changed here. The food is exactly the same as when I was a tiny boy. This is what regional pride is all about. Food which brings back memories and a sense of belonging. Okay. Regional pride is in the Italian blood. Italy was only created just 150 years ago. Before then, it was separate states which were always fighting each other. And in 
times of war, the first thing the town would defend was its bell tower, or campanile. That's why even now us Italians have a word for regional pride, campanilismo. Look the campanile. This, my dear Gennaro, is the symbol of all the campanilismo in Italy, symbolizing all the culture, the language, and of course, the food. I'm prepared to fight the dirty to defend the food of my region. What is this here? A tomato. Tomato comes from south of Italy, Antonio. Antonio, who is that man on top there? Look, can you see? Which one? The one on the, on the winter there. There's no man there. Who is that? Who is, who is throwing bloody tomatoes here? Another one there. I want to see clear here. Who is that? It's unbelievable. No. <laughs> the lovely company Lisbon, north the south. That's good. You can see Campanilismo played out every year in Asti, a small town in the heart of Piemonte. Asti Spaglio is the oldest horse race in Italy. It celebrates a medieval war against Asti's historic enemy, the nearby town of Alba. Nowadays, though, it is competition between the 21 different rioni or neighborhoods of Asti itself. For weeks before the race, each town quarter hangs banners and flags and plots its victory. The whole town is completely taken over by the build-up to the big day. The night before the race, each neighborhood holds a dinner to boost up her jockey and prepare him for battle. Gennaro is with Tanaro, a poorer district on the outskirts of town. Tanaro are the favorite to win the race. Bellissimo. This neighborhood is a poor people, while San Secondo is a snob. There are snob people. San Secondo Antonio is there. Yes, he is yes. a little bit snobby. But uh, tomorrow we must uh, have a fight uh, with tomorrow, San Secondo. I, believe me, tomorrow yeah. me and Antonio is going to be like the hundred of punching. I am supporting Tanaro's arch rivals, San Secondo, from the posher side of town. My place, as you know, it's the kitchen, and I would like to see what happened there. Yes, cos'è il ripieno? Carne trita, salsiccia e formaggio e uova. So this is a cabbage leaves, and inside is meat, sausage, and parmesan cheese. It's called capunet. Mmm, wonderful. The smell, just unbelievable. How clever they are, because the sauce is going to be butter and sage. So if I impregnate all the flavor like that of sage, it will be fantastic. I'm working hard as usual. No time for me to eat. I have assigned myself the role of quality control. This is the most uh, sort of known dish here from Piemonte, this insalata di carne cruda. And it's a sort of uh, raw beef salad. You know, you can be obsessive with hygiene. This is fantastic. No. Unbelievable. Tanaro! San Secondo! Antonio Carluccio! Climax of the ceremony is to present the jockey with a racing shirt for tomorrow. There is no flash of ceremony here, just love and passion. I spoke to the jockey. He looked a little bit scared. Don't worry, he said, you know, tomorrow is going to be a very good day for you. And then he looked at me and he said to me, I hope so, because <laughs> he's really scared, believe me. I find it very touching that a group of people, they believe in something very, very strong. This is the typical Italian campanilismo, where a small region, a small group of people, they believe very healthily to be better than the other. 
My God, up he wins tomorrow. Can you see how many people singing and screaming and drinking wine? Can you imagine if he lose tomorrow? <laughs> but you know what? He's going to win. Because if he's win, I won. And Antonio lost. Arrivederci. Bye-bye. He can't say anything anymore. On the big day, the whole town turns out in Piazza Alfieri to cheer from the heart for their horse and their district. This is the biggest event of the year. Everyone wants to win. This is modern day campanilism. Antonio, shall we do a bet? Okay, so if a tunnel win, you owe me a truffles. If San Segundo win, owe you a truffles. And if they both don't win for that, then? We're gonna eat the truffle. Check it, it's done. Torreta, buon. Pensate a stare concentrati con il cavallo per partire. È molto, molto importante per voi in questo momento. The race is dangerous. The jockeys ride bareback. The pride of each district is a stake. the truffle. When Italy became one big country in 1861, the regions may have united politically, but they certainly didn't gastronomically. Campanellismo nowadays is all about pride in the food from your area. And there's something here in Piemonte that we are justly proud of. And something Antonio has promised to buy from me. After all, a bet is a bet. In early winter, every year in this small square in Asti, deals are done involving hundreds of thousands of euros. This happens nowhere else in Italy. It's unique to this area, my area. We have come to meet my old dealer, Sandrino. Ah, they're just like gold. Ah, truffles. Ah, eccezional. Urca. Eccezional. Sandrino is more or less the king of the truffles here in Asti. He was delivered to me for many, many years, personally, from a restaurant in London. And he's known to have only fantastic fresh stuff. He was very clever to buy from people like this gentleman here. A big they are. Piano, 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 Here, no checks, no credit card. Only cash. Yeah. 
Yeah. How much you pay to these truffles? 700 uh, euro for one kilo. It is, for me, you know, memory of childhood. November fog, little dog going around, sniffing away. And I always was having a little one to bring home. It was fantastic. These truffles come from Asti, but are known around the world as the white truffles of Alba. This is because Asti's ancient enemy launched an aggressive global PR campaign in the 1950s. A clever example of companies. C'è la tartufa lei? No. No. E se ti dona bene. Il box full inside. That is because Gennaro is an outsider here. This is my area, so only I can do a deal. The intensity of the smell, that's what is you look for. Because when you cut it in thin slices to flavor some, you have to have the maximum of flavor. And allora abbiamo detto 400. 170, via. 160, via. 160, via. Okay. So there are one very large and three small. And they're all together 160 euros. Very special price. In London, you could easily double. Yes. <laughs> One of my favorite recipes with truffles is pasta with chicken livers and white truffle, a real typical dish of Piemonte. Wow. Antonio. Yes. I'm not used to anymore on this bicycle. Yes, I know. But this is all for the love of food. But you are very useful. Come on, come on. What do you mean I'm very useful? Come yeah, because on, you on. bring me something, probably. Yeah. Smell first. Ah! <laughs> what was <laughs> you got shocked? <laughs> <laughs> so what did my good friend bring? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. My truffle. OK, we use it. Do you, know, do you know what I'm doing here? What are you doing, Natalia? Wonderful tagliolini with fegatini. Just fantastic. It's extremely simple. Some wonderful butter in it. And this is unsalted butter. And then I put chopped onions. Meanwhile, you prepare the chicken livers and you cut in small cubes like this. You know, there's really so sort of cuisine, moff moff, my type of cuisine. Who is it, moff moff? Moff moff is minimum of fast, maximum of flavor. You don't know it yet. You know, it's all right. Now I know, you know. After all this year, I should know yes. that. Now I put this stuff here in it, which is the, the chicken livers. It butter. goes so quickly. Yeah. Did you put enough salt in the water? I'm going to use it now. Yes, I this will put is. enough salt inside. Yeah. Yeah. Eat the pasta that hasn't been cooked like this and taste of nothing. So now it's just a little bit of uh, wine. And this is a fortified wine. If you have a little bit of cherry, cherry would be very good. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Now we grate just a little bit of the truffle to give fantastic smell. A little bit there, because the rest we put here on top. Shall I put the pasta in? Put the pasta in. Lovely. It is cooked. It cooks about one and a half minutes like this when it's fresh pasta. And give me also a little bit of the, the water. A couple of teaspoons. This is a, a little trick to make the pasta very sort of moist. Small and you know what? I had just a little bit of butter for reason of... Uh, Make it creamy, a little bit oh, creamy. That's fantastic. Oh, I can't wait to eat Another, it. Yes, me nice. Now, let me see. Female, mm. you? Yeah, no, just about. Oops. And now the piece de resistance. Oh. Come on, a little bit more. Every slice is about five pounds, you know. Ah, oh, bless you. And yeah. now something else, a lovely Parmesan cheese. Gennaro, this is a dish for kings and pigs, they say, because the I truffle see. is liked by the pigs and by the kings in the same. So what do you prefer to be? Antonio, I'll be the king. Yeah, yeah, sure. you be the pig. <laughs> sure, you would. Now we peruse here. Be delicate, have a little spoon here, not just lunch, it's a little peasant Look, like this. You mind your ah. own business. Only reason why, because you can't do like I do it. Mm. Mm. Only a terrone, somebody from the south of Italy can eat like this. At least you can eat. You are very greedy when you eat this stuff, you know, Anton. Listen, you. don't tell me about greediness because you can show quite a lot on your yeah. tummy while well, I lost it. Mm. <laughs> I don't think you have any mirror inside your house, you know, Antonio. 
Mm. I don't care, it's delicious. Well done, you know. For once in your life, you show me you can cook something. Okay, you, you, uh, you can go because we are busy now. Thank you, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> I think my region, Piemonte, is the most beautiful and distinct in the country. It has the most diverse and surprising cuisine. Things grown here are not found anywhere else in Italy or even Europe, like risotto rice. And this region is its capital. You know, Gennaro, this is a fantastic area full of paddy fields. And how many people they know that Italy produces rice? You know, I can't believe it. this is Italy. You see the mountain down there, the Alps, they bring a lot of water, very good for cultivating rice. That's why the area here is supposed to be for a long, long time the world capital of rice. They produce about 55% of all the rice that we use in Europe. <gasps> yeah. 55 55% is quite a lot. It's quite a lot, rice. Yes. This special Cannaroli risotto rice is protected by EU law. It has protected designation of origin, or DOP. It can only be sold under the name Carnaroli. If it's actually grown in this region, it all comes from regional pride. We Italians have more legally protected foods than any other country. Parmesan, mozzarella, and balsamic vinegar are other examples. The regions today use the law to fight their battles. This area is also very unique for something else only found in this part of Italy. Tomorrow we are going fishing. General, tell me one thing. What is the umbrella for? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. That is the secret. The first, help you to walk. Yeah. You know? Secondly? Defend yourself. Yeah, and then? Yeah, and then? And then, Her Majesty, carry the bread. umbrella. Thank you, thank you. OK. And, and then, then what and you then. do? In case you are too hot. Very good. And very good. the main thing I use this umbrella, Tony, is to catch a frog. No. You what catch you a know? frog with the umbrella. I'll catch a frog with the umbrella. I am speechless. I am, I am speechless, speechless for your seriousness. I have just... I really want yeah. to see what happened now. <laughs> well, Come on. OK, let's do Shall it. Shall we go? Yeah, I'll show it to you. Yeah. For centuries, frog fishing has happened in this small pocket of Italy. Yes, you hear it correctly. Frogs, these crazy northerners, eat anything as long as it is local. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Come va? Bene. Cosa pescato? Come va? Come rane. Va? Buongiorno. Rane. 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 Ce n'è, ce n'è qualcuna? Sì. Dove? Buongiorno, signora. Cos'è? Non voglio vedere quella la grossa? No, una No, voglio vedere adesso. What is the bait? Cos'è il l'esca? L'esca è una rana piccola. Can you understand? He uses a very small uh, frog because they are, they are uh, carnivorous. They eat each other. E adesso quanti anni ha? Eh, adesso ne ho 82, quasi compiuti. He's 82 years old and he started when he was nine. So all the time he was fishing those frogs. You know. Oh, you see, it's got the same age of Antonio. <laughs> Dai, che l'arriva! Ah! Opa! Lembra l'ombrello! L'ombrello! Porta l'ombrello! Ma me ne scappa! Va, no, va, va! Eh, hey, scappa, che scappa! <laughs> hey, Antonio, this is how we do it. Come on, where do you try to go? Yeah, you didn't believe me, I, look. Uh, yeah, you can tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah well, look. Eh, what a bella musica. Eh, yeah. come fa, come fa, vocalmente, come fa? A wonderful song from the festival. Jebi, Jebi, Jebi di Capi Sing, and Kirby Boomer Aqua, the Mambi Boomer Bing. This is a Piemontese, very similar to the French actually, and uh, it uh, praises uh, somebody that during the day was working and in the night was going fishing frogs. Qua ce n'è una grossa, eh? That's a very big one. Look at this. Mamma, mamma. Wow. Gennaro, you have a prince there. Try to kiss it. 
Frog fishing is unique to this area in Italy, and they are tastier than you think. Well, when in Rome, or Piemonte to be precise, Just a coating of egg and flour. Delicious. Buone, a farti bene, eh? Okay. She said they're well made. Grazie. Questo era ancora più buono. At this time of the day, so they're even better just before eating. E la buon condimento, eh? A me non manca. Yeah. Fantastic. Before we leave my hometown, there's one very, very special place I must visit. Ah, 15 more years ago, almost 60 years ago. Unbelievable. I lived here at this station for more than 20 years. My papa's was a station master, and we came to Piemonte in 1937, when I was just seven months old. That was the kitchen. The loo up there, and now it's derelict. That's unbelievable. Here was a peach tree. All the people, when they were stopping here, they were getting the peaches, and I was like, well, stop. <laughs> but in 1960, when I was 22, tragedy hit our family. My little brother Enrico drowned in a lake. He was 13 years old. And that was very, very bad very sad, very... I don't know what I thought at the beginning, but I remember that on the day when he died, I concentrated myself in cooking. I went to the market and I bought about a kilo of um, uh, anchovies in salt, and I desalted and sort of take the bone. I prepared all filet, I chopped a lot of uh, parsley, a lot of parsley a bit of garlic and chili, and it uh, acciuga in salsa verde, which is anchovy in a green sauce. And that was my way to cope with the situation, because I was all day engaged in doing that. And that was the first time that uh, sort of food appeared to be a therapeutic thing, because that, it is therapeutic. Cooking is a wonderful thing. The death of Enrico was my main reason for leaving Italy in 1961. I had two brothers. Carlo still lives in the area and has come to meet me at the station. This is my elder brother, <laughs> five years elder. One of the most wonderful oh, things is that he reminded me that as a child, I was sent by my mother down to the office to see if the train would depart on time so that she could throw the pasta into the water. <laughs> so that when Papa was coming up for lunch, it was perfect. Ciao! But while Mama served us Italian staples like risotto and polenta every day, foreign influences were embraced in this part of Italy too. Many of my recipes have been inspired from Piemonte's neighboring country. Apfelstrollo. Do you know that I can speak Dutch? Yeah, I speak Dutch. No, you didn't understand what I said. <laughs> yeah. I said that you didn't know that I can speak German. Try to me, try to me in German, and I will answer. This is the Apfelstrudel. Was ist das? <laughs> das habe ich gesagt. This is the Apfelstrudel. Schön. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I peace, yes. <laughs> now, this is a sort of dessert apple, which has been cut in cubes and I just spare you the cutting and chopping. 
Then they come about three tablespoons of uh, raisins, then 100 grams of sugar. This is about 100 grams, general. <laughs> 50 each. There you are. <laughs> a full uh, teaspoon of cinnamon, a little bit of butter, 50 grams, and uh, what shall I do with that? unsalted butter. You keep it there because you have to put it in a pot and melt it. And now, Gennaro, to you the honor of grating a little bit of the orange oh. and put the juice of the orange in it as well. Oh, thank you very much. You always give a nice job to do. Now you put a little bit of water, this is 100 grams thank of you, water, man. and then you put it on the stove to stew a little bit for about 10 minutes. OK, I will do that. Yeah. Fantastic, lovely. And to this now, I'm going to add some breadcrumb to mop up the juices and make it a little bit more sort of. It's good. So when you actually fill yes. the filo pastry, it won't be so yes. juicy, so all the better. Okay. There you are. Right. And now what do you need we mix it? it. What do you need? It? It's a tablespoon. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lovely thing to do. This. That's prepared now to be put in the pastry. And for the first time, I use the easy option, which is fantastic filo pastry. And we take two sheets. Can I add the melted butter, please? There it is. It's all done Wonderful. here. Wonderful, yes. And we do this. Go on. Not too hot, no. no. And we brush it like this. Brush it. Right. To give a bit of flavor and taste, and also to stick together. OK. And then you take another sheet, and you put it on top of it. Ah, look at this. It's just like silk. Again, a little bit of the maestro, it is. Grazie. And now we take the filling. <clears throat> you see, we put it a little bit here. It's enough for you, eh? Yeah, that's enough. Plenty for me. Good. Roll it very carefully. Put a little bit of butter here. Thank you. Simple. And then we turn it like this. And we do a lovely little flower here, look. How delicate German cooking can be. What flower you make with this one? I don't know. And <laughs> then <laughs> it's possible to put a little bit of poppy seeds. Now, Gennaro, can you put in the oven? Right. For half an hour, 180 degrees. Yep. Good. Ho ho! Oh, that looks wonderful. Okay, can you put one there? Yeah, of course I can. One there. Put this one, it's fantastic. So the ice cream is for cooling down the mm. temperature. Mm. And now, buon appetito. You go more than me? Yes, yeah, obvious. You can have the rest. You know why? Mm, I know why. Mm. Very good. So the old German, they had a good invention, eh? Not bad, this foreign dish, Antonio. OK, thank you. Then now, you know what it reminds me? Eating strudel. Lovely years that I had in Vienna. Why you went to Vienna? A nice girl called Inge. Probably my first love in my life. <clears throat> she was very beautiful, blonde, real Viennese, middle. And um, what's to happen to that girl? We left each other because it was too premature to get married. We were both very young. I knew the way you was eating, and it was just mm, bring memory back. Gennaro, you are a genius. No, right, OK, all right, all right. But you know what? What? 50 years on, we are still good friends. That's good. And you still make the stroll dog together? No, she does it by herself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll trust you. <laughs> Very good. Mm. Mm. 
not only the uh, best German dishes, but French cooking too has made its way into Piemontese cuisine. We were ruled by the French Savoy dynasty for more than 800 years. They left the legacy everywhere in the region's capital, Turin. It's there in the language, the white boulevards and the architecture. Ah, ah che bello! Finally, Antonio, this is very nice. What is it? This is the example of the influence of French food in Italy. In Turin, they love to do little patisseries, similar to the French. It's very delicate, very nice. Taste one. I prefer the little baba. That's a real preservation of French. What baba? Le, le petit baba. You find in, in the Piemont especially an incredible amount of similar thing to France. This is one of them, and many other things, including the dialect. So it was a battle not only of uh, uh, military sort of type, but also for food. Because they tried to introduce their own food when they were here, and they were taking from the Piemontese the food that they had. You eat this no, one. No, you eat this one. No, you eat this one. So you can see how much Piemontese cuisine has borrowed from its neighbors. But at least the raw ingredients are 100% Italian. This is Porta Palazzo Market in the heart of Turin. As a treat, my mother would take me by train to Turin and we would come to this market. Everything you need to make classic Piemontese food is here. And it's all local. Look the old lady there. It's è del vostro giardino questo? Sì. It's all of the own garden. It's fantastico. Grazie. Quante? No, no, no. Le mangiamo così. Una c'è qua. One euro fifty. That's very cheap. Ecco lei, signore. Giusto? Grazie. Just fantastic. But we have been away from Italy for a long time. This market is changing. When I was a small boy, I remember migrants from the south of Italy here, but nobody from abroad. Now they are Africans, Eastern Europeans and Chinese. Not surprising. Today, immigrants make up more than 14% of Turin's population. And there is lots of stuff here. Even I don't recognize. Italians are so bewildered by these foreign ingredients. There's now a tour guide for the market. Vittorio Castellani shows confused Italians around Porto Palazzo and introduces them to new and foreign producers. I started uh, uh, organizing the, the world tour into this market because uh, Italian people are very curious about uh, the new products, new cultures, new Coming from other countries. Yes, but they are afraid also. Why? We have a lot of migrants coming from uh, Romania, from Morocco, from China, and each, each people needs to feed with their own products. This is the Chinese cabbage. Yes, this is the Chinese wonderful. cabbage. Yes. But this comes from, uh, from Turin. Yeah. And, uh, and that comes from Turin, nearby here. Yes. Do you know, this is the first time I saw a green aubergine. <laughs> yeah, me too. Never. First cut. This is a sort of ah, garlic this is fantastic. And it is fantastic because it's a sort of degree less than normal garlic. And it gives a lovely, I use it in London quite a lot. For and soups, now, fresh. <laughs> I heard that in Tuscany, the local authority forbid people to do cultivation and to get the same because they think that they could contaminate the uh, Italian culture. Is it true? Yes, it is true, but uh, it's. Uh, it's crazy. Why are they Love afraid? It. Afraid of what? I don't know. <laughs> they say that these are not Italian products, so we have to stay on artichoke, on aubergine, on tomato. But in the past, tomato wasn't Italian. Now we have tomato. But they forget the polenta come from maize, and maize come from South of America. <laughs> South America, so that's good. So what's yeah, the problem? Yeah. The tomato, the tomato, comes, the uh, potato, the basil, the mint, and God, that was everything else. Always history, the, the food and the products travel. But these wonderful new vegetables aren't popular with everyone. We heard that it's not just farms that authorities are closing down. 
Several Italian cities have banned ethnic restaurants or takeaways from opening inside the city walls. Surely this is a campanilismo gone mad. We have come to see a Chinese farm just outside Turin. Oh, that's Linda. 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 Piacere. Piacere. Linda. Come stai, Linda? Molto bene, piacere. Bene, bene. Sì, sì. Piacere, molto piacere. Linda is the translator for us. We certainly need it because... Can you speak Chinese? Uh, I can always try, Antonio. Yeah. On oh, nice, a few food. How do you say good morning Chinese? Ni hao. Ni hao. Eh. Ni hao. Mm. Può farci vedere un po' sì. questo? So sì. she will lead us into the growing fields. Buongiorno. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. No, I said first. I said first. I said first. I said it second. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh yes. Look at this. Belle zucche sono. Ni hao. <laughs> Chinese pumpkin, I can't believe it. Ni hao. This is a, a bitter. Amaro. Oh, that cleans blood, this one. Gennaro, you need to clean your blood. Come on. Have a look. Eat. Have a look. Ni hao. As always, Gennaro and I are hungry. What a perfect place to be. This is a Chinese mice. Bianco. Ah, so it's not yellow, but it's white. You can see the milk, Rusty. Try it. Yeah. Tastes the very flowery. Yeah. Ni hao. This is the famous pak choy. It's a wonderful cabbage. <laughs> Cabbage. I love it. Very good taste. Ah, yeah, the okra. Look at this, the okra here. Ladies' fingers. Antonio, you love it. Aha. Hey, Antonio. Chica. <laughs> the, the, the smell is the same. Absolutely no seeds. Tasty. I taste it as well. What a tasty. Very good, sweet. This wonderful farm has so much to offer, but it may not be here for long. Right-wing politicians are threatening to close it down. But I believe the Italian they are a little bit worried that they don't want the Italian food culture being diluted. And uh, they start to think that perhaps slowly, slowly, with all those in imports and all the uh, new generation of people coming to Italy, that that could be the case. But I find it a little bit silly, I said. No, really. obviously it's silly, Gennaro. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Nobody says it's intelligent. Oh, we have quite a lot here. So. Yeah, no, who's going to carry you? You or me? No, we carry it together. Oh, yeah. the, hallelujah, for the first okay, time we carry them together. Come on, come on. Yeah, do you know what, Antonio, leave it. Don't I, be. I, I carry it much better than you. Lovely. Yeah, I know that you are stronger. And yes, I know, but it's all right. That was always your, your task. To yes, uh, always my, what do you mean always <laughs> my task? To carry we believe the Italian always. cultures is strong enough to cope with a little foreign influence. And to prove it, I'm going to use the ginger from the Chinese farms to spice up one of my favorite Italian dishes. What are you cooking there? I'm going to cook this fantastic pork, which is cooked with the ginger. It seems so easy to make. It's hardly anything, but you need a little help. Yeah. So, do you know what? Do me a favor, clean me this one. Yeah, I can, I can. What actually I'm going to do, Antonio, I'm going to have some olive oil inside here. I use a nice bit of pancetta. If you don't have a pancetta, you can use a nice bit of bacon, which is the same. Then you have a bit of pancetta inside, and you make sure you seal the pancetta nice. In exactly the same way, you flavor as well the oil, which is inside. It helps. And then you move it, because you don't actually want to burn the pancetta. The smell is wonderful. Can I take it for you, yes? Yeah, take him on the side, Antonio. Leave yeah, it up there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. good. Do you want to do me a favor, Antonio? Yes. Can you peel this carrot for me? I can. Here, I have a fantastic fillet of pork, which what I'm going to do, I'm going to season properly, wrap it in properly. You make sure that everything that goes in well. And then you get the pork inside. You seal them up properly, really nice. Now, this is where it comes the best part of it. 
I'll have a couple of cloves of garlic. I'll just crush them a little bit. Four tablespoons of honey. Yum. Then comes the ginger. A few slices of ginger. You can see all the dripping, all the honey inside, which is coated with all this ginger. The garlic's work is as well inside, almost a little punch it. And inside, slowly, slowly, do you want to have a look as well? Are you all right like that, Tanto? Gennaro, I think okay. this dish is cooked by your sheer passion. You're really cooking with passion. Can you put this stuff from me? This here, yes, I do. Yeah, there you ah, are. Ah, fantastic. Then the pancetta goes inside. Helps the flavor to come out. And after that, you get the rosemary. Pork and rosemary working out so well. Then after you've done all this, you have a little bit of a stock, which is enough. And what stock is it? It can be any kind of a stock. This particular one, it is vegetable stock, but you can have a chicken stock, beef stock, please yourself. Yeah. Then you have a carrot, which very kindly, Antoni, cut it. Then you do have all shallots, which you cut them in half, and you have them inside like that. Then parsnips, parsnips work in ever so well. Unfortunately, do you know what? In Italy, which we call them a white carrot, pastinacchia, I can't find it. So, why not to use these fantastic pumpkins? Cook the vegetable of about half hour. After half hour, remove the vegetable, put it on bay, stand it, and cook the pork for about another hour. Just before you serve it, add the vegetable inside, cook for a few more minutes and serve it. So you mean, you mean everything together would be one and a half hour? Yes. Come on, my goodness. So I go to my bench, bench. I eat a pear. Eat a pear. Bye-bye. You've been at the pears. Bye-bye. <laughs> and, and this is the simple, quick Italian food, yes? Well, I put them all in between ah. the inside. Do you know, one of these days, I don't know what I'm going to do. The pear tastes wonderful. Yeah, thank you. The pear tastes wonderful. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, that's no, okay. okay. Just close your eyes for me. Just, just. No, 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 here, here, here. It's fine. Yeah, that's lovely. Okay, go, go and cook. Cut here. Ah, that's lovely. One and a half hour. <gasps> it's ready. I'm gonna remove it. Oh, all the vegetable, side of the carrots. You can see, Antonio, just like a baby. As soon as you wake up, meow, meow. I have to start to feed you. Uh, you can see it's the nice and white inside. It's very hot. You can see how, how thick they got it. Oh my goodness me. Put them on top. I can see his nose already moving. You watch. Antonio! Ah, Come. finally. Finally. You actually, all together, I think you've been asleep for about nearly an hour because... That's of, good. Uh, yes, good. So, so now, for one hour, I was liberated of you talk. Antonio. That's wonderful. Mmm. Uh. Delicious. The nugget. I'm impressed. I'm very, very That's young. very good. Well done. I only have to say you well done. New ingredients like ginger are beginning to make their way into Italian cuisine. Some may work, but we want to see what effect this may be having on our traditional dishes. Where do you come from? Well, I went to buy some grapes in the market. Oh, that's very good of you. That's wonderful. Come on, Samia. Some of this one as well. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. We heard there is a young chef who cooks Italian dishes, but with foreign ingredients. They call it fusion. 
but I'm a little worried that might end up as confusion. Buongiorno. Buongiorno a tutti. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Ah, buongiorno. buongiorno. Wow, what are we doing here? Ah, buongiorno. buongiorno. Antonio Carluccio. <laughs> Giulia. Giulia. Come stai Giulia? Giulia? Stai bene? Bene, benissimo. Giulia, what are you doing? I'm Cosa making fai? pasta. With a cuttlefish ink. Oh yes, black yeah? pasta, yes. We are trying to do some fusion. Fusion? fusion. Yeah, fusion. Oh, that's cuisine. interesting. Huh? That's interesting. Yeah, but why? Why do you do that? Because uh, I'm curious, because it's, because it's the curious. future. Yeah, it's the future. I like it. We are going to cook uh, our risotto with a miso stock in place of uh, vegetable stock. Yes, it smells of miso. And with uh, pak choy, is a Chinese cabbage, and lemongrass, cashew nuts, and a little bit of uh, shallots. Mm? So Cheese we like... have cashew nuts from India, yeah. pak choy from China, yeah. Lemongrass from Thailand. Yep. Fungi shiitake. Shiitake from China. We have miso from uh, miso Japan. Miso from Japan. We have coriander from coriander. Maroc. Yes. And, and you mean this also, would be a good risotto? Yeah. Have you thought to give a specific taste to the entire thing, or is just an imagination because those items, they sound very good? So actually, I tried to make the recipe yesterday. I, I, I think... And it was good? Yes, they were. Well, I'm they, very they were, curious. They were. So, Perhaps this is good. Show, show the face, show the face. Thanks, John. <laughs> a new world, Gennaro. A completely new world. Ready? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. We are very ready. That looks good. Are enough. Oh, this is the risotto. Misotto. I'm sorry, it's not the risotto. I know what it is. Yeah, what is it? It is a fisotto. Ah, fisotto. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely experiment. <clears throat> but I wouldn't take this as a base to continue doing this, because it's lovely, it's a warm rice salad with um, sort of uh, spice and, and uh, taste from the East. That's all that I can say che votazione gli dà, dall'1 a 10? Un 7, direi. 7. Cioè, ci vuole dire 7. Sì, perché è gradevole, comunque, è piacevole. It, it is, it is uh, pleasurable, but it's not a risotto. It's not that I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like course. it compared to a risotto. I would not call it's, it a risotto. It's a fusion, a a fusion uh, dish. A fusion we, rice. We don't have to use uh, the name of risotto and find another name. It's yeah. true, it's true. Anyway, well done for your researches. That's good. Get on with it, but don't compare it to Italian food. I won't. Good. <laughs> good. It's another thing. Yeah, it's another thing. Another dimension. Yeah, it's true. I... But you are courageous because it's very seldom one of the young people that they start to move a little bit on. And that's good because if you find the lovely niche of uh, very good food, then you may call it Julia Fusion, <laughs> and that's fine. Uh -huh. The young people, they want to have something new here, but they want to have something new because they don't know the entire palette of Italian cuisine. They are from Piemont, they know only the Piemontese cuisine, they are fed up with it, and they want to create something new. If they would know what Italian food is about, the 20 regions, and they would discover that they're fantastic dishes. They should be cooked first, well, and then go on into fusion. That's my result. You know, we love food. We come in Italy to taste the Italian food. And this is what you expected to find. But when we find a at conclusion... Least, at least a hint of Italian food. Yeah. But it was none. That was none at all. 
I was a nice looking girl. She was a pretty girl, bless her. She tried very hard to bless her. But if she goes around the world, as I said, and she coming back in five, six years' time, but up there is something pleasant about the cooking she would do it. We have seen some fantastic new ingredients in Italy, but I think Italian food simply cannot be messed with. It is the greatest food in the world. I think we have discovered something about ourselves. We are as companionistic as the day we left Italy. We haven't changed much in nearly 50 years. Viva l'Italia! You cook something for me tonight? Pasta fagioli, you like a pasta fagioli. And the way I cook it. Just simply a bit of spaghetti with a bit of tomato and basil. Fresh tomato, lovely ripe tomato. Little garlic there, little chili. You like chili as well? Next time, we go to Puglia, the hill of Italy. Gennaro and I are on the pilgrimage. I will be fulfilling my lifelong quest to visit one of the most sacred places in Italy. I'm a fanatic, maybe okay. And I will be continuing my lifelong quest to discover the world's most wonderful foods. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. I will try to lead Antonio down the right path for once in his life. I'm going inside the church. Yeah. You want to come with me inside the church? Mm, do you think they give coffee then? No, I don't think so, Antonio. Yeah, but then, coffee. look, I do a proposal. You go to the church and they go into the bed. And I will show Gennaro there is really only one thing to put your faith in, food. Gennaro, you felt yourself in heaven today, yes. It's so delicious. Yeah.